Hi, today we're going to talk about antivirals. Now, this is a quick topic, so we're going to try to go through it relatively quickly. Um, the first thing you need to know what are viruses, okay? And viruses are living organisms. We don't really know if they really satisfy the idea of um, what is life because they cannot reproduce independently. Viruses are parasites. They take uh, the host machinery to actually reproduce themselves. And so what are the things that make up a virus different than, for example, bacteria? All right, one, they're much smaller. They do not, con they do not have any cellular um, structures, all right? So um, they don't have a nucleus, they don't have a nucleoid, uh, they have no cytoplasm. Um, and most importantly, again, that they cannot reproduce independently. Uh, basically, its main two little parts, a protein code and some genetic code, some type of RNA or DNA. So uh, that's basically what it makes up a virus. Now, this is a particular type of virus. You know, it's a little bit more complex. It has a couple more, more uh, parts. But the most basic things about viruses is that they really have to have that, prat that protein code or capsule and some type of genetic code, DNA or RNA. If they contain RNA, they tend to have an enzyme that will copy RNA and make DNA from it. Uh, so they are called retroviruses. The flu and HIV are, for example, two uh, examples of uh, retroviruses. All right. Now, how do they work? Basically, there are four stages into how a uh, virus works in order to um, replicate itself. All right, because that's all they are interested in doing. All right, so one, it must attach itself to the surface of the cell, and once it's attached to the surf surface of the cell, all right, it can then inject its genetic material into the cell. So that's stage two. All right, uh, that genetic material, uh, together with any kind of other enzymes that it may be present inside of the uh, protein coat. All right will travel to the host cell's uh, nucleus where they, they will hijack the um, genetic machinery of the cell. All right? So what are they going to do? Well, it's going to start synthesizing copies of itself, copies of the genetic material, and also uh, telling the machinery of the cell, the host cell, to actually make protein coats so we can actually make new virus particles. All right. Once the cell, the host cell has put together the genetic material within that coat, then the last stage that happens is that it will cause the cell membrane to lyse, break, and release all of these new viral particles out. Those vertical particles will now be present in the fluid that's in between cells, the intercellular fluid, and obviously now they're free to infect other cells. And so that is the general idea of how uh, the cycle of a uh, virus is. All right. Well, how do we work with it? How does our um, body respond to that? Well, it's going to be through antibodies. All right. Antibodies have this little kind of uh, shape. They're kind of Y-shaped, and they have binding sites at, in the fork of the Y, okay, that just randomly have been created to kind of attach to some particular uh, sequence of amino acids. And um, when it finds that sequence, it will attach it, and then it will aggregate them, all right? Those... Uh, Virus particles that get collected like that then get destroyed by some other type of white blood cells that will come and eat up and gobble up and digest uh, those um, aggregates from antibodies. All right, this is just a simplified version of what's going on. Now, even though we have response for this, the reality is that there are many, many viruses that get past our immune system. And so we try to develop antiviral uh, drugs. But it's been relatively difficult to do this. And why? Well, because, and here are the important things to, to understand of why um, development of, of antiviral drugs have been difficult. Because, one, they must act uh, 
uh, on the cell because viruses are within the host cells. So it's very difficult for that drug to get into the cell and to actually find the virus particle to uh, act on it directly. Second, viruses mutate very, very rapidly. All right, so they have a very high rate of mutation. So even if we develop a drug that is actually capable of uh, stopping a particular virus, that virus may change in just a few generations. And related to that, of course, is the very high rate at which um, viruses multiply. The more rapid the, the rate of reproduction, all right, or of, of multiplication, the more rapid the rate of mutation as well. And so those go hand in hand, making it more difficult. All right. So how or what have we done to try to get antiviral drugs to work? What we really try to do is we can modify the genetic code in the, HES, in the host cell in order to stop it from being able to read uh, the genetic code from the virus and therefore stop it from actually hijacking the machinery. Two, a different way of stopping it is by stopping the enzymatic activity in the host cell. So the host cell no longer has activity and therefore, again, stops the virus from acting. This is not great because you are telling your, your cells, stop working. Do not do anything else. Now, it stops the virus from being reproduced, but it also stops all other functions. And it does not get rid of the virus. The virus is just trapped inside of that cell. And finally, uh, we could try to make changes to the cell membranes in order to avoid, all right, or prevent the entry of the um, virus or the virus ma genetic materials for stopping it from being injected. But that has resulted, uh, it's been very difficult and there have been uh, mutations. The, the few times that it was uh, done, the mutations have now happened and um, the virus can now get through again. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> so. If we look at the four stages, all right, no um, of viral uh, reproduction uh, or action, right? No drugs have been very good at actually stopping the attachment from uh, of of viral particles onto the receptors and to the surface of the host cells. All right, that has been very very difficult, and so no much much has been able to do with that. The second thing that has happened um, that we have been able to do in the second stage uh, is to inhibit the injection. Okay, so the attachment, not a possible, but inhibiting the uh, injection of um, the genetic material and the enzymes into the host cell has been, uh, has been able to be done with drugs such as amantadine and remantadine. All right, so here we got these two structures. All right, um, those structures are not in your data booklet. Um, so you don't really need to memorize it, but you, it's not a bad thing. The only problem is that viral strains have mutated and have developed uh, resistance to these particular drugs, so they are no longer effective. All right, so we are left with the last two stages, stage three and stage four. All right, stage three, remember, is when we have the... Um, use of the machinery of the host by the genetic material of the virus all right in order to produce new copies and so here we have two particular drugs that have been uh relatively successful all right and i do talk about this as being relative saying this relatively successful uh because they're not perfect all right but they do help interrupt the reproductive uh, system or the reproductive cycle of uh, the virus, all right? These two drugs are acyclovir, all right, which is used for uh, herpes, all right? And cividulin, uh, cividudine, sorry, which is used for HIV, a human immunodeficiency virus, all right? These two uh, drugs, and here, are the, they are going to be, they are present in your data booklet, all right, on table 34, um, you, in pages uh, 39, both of them are uh, on page 39. Um, so, this particular drugs, uh, acyclovir in particular, all right, um, mimics the structure of guanosine. And guanosine is one of the um, base pair, uh, 
yeah, of one of the bases in a uh, base uh, in DNA. All right, and by actually doing this, it actually gets incorporated and stops the activity of this copied genetic material. All right, so by doing this, it stops making new copies of the virus. And so that's one of the things that acyclovir, um, acyclovir is going to be very good at doing. All right, now cividoline is similar to another uh, base from DNA rather than guanosine it is similar to uh, thymidine all right now thymidine does not have this azido group over here which is what um so we do uh c do rudine i cannot say this quickly uh c, c do c do rudine um can actually uh do and again it behaves by incorporating itself into the rna and when it's making this new genetic material for the virus this material is inactive and therefore cannot be um, copied, cannot um, trigger the, the production of uh, protein codes, etc. All right, so this is actually a nice way of stopping and, and reducing the action of this uh, virus. The fourth way of doing this is when we have uh, drugs such as Osaltamivir, which is Tamiflu, uh, and Sanamivir, which is Relenza, all right? Both of them are drugs that act on um, the flu, all right? And again, their structures are on um, page 39 of your data booklet and table uh, 37, 37, all right? Now, what these two drugs do, um, both Osaltamivir and um, Sanamivir, they actually stop the cell the host cell from actually lysing all right and releasing the 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 viral particles all right so they do not allow for little bubbles on the cell wall to form that can then burst and release the viral particles okay so they do this by as you can see releasing inhibiting the action of neuromidases all right so this is actually quite uh, an interesting thing. Osaltamivir, in particular, needs to react in the body to become the active metab metabolite. Okay, so what it does, it it breaks this ester bond. All right, it becomes hydrolyzed. So we add water to this ester bond, and so that part will become. It's not writing. There we go back the carboxylic acid all right so we can think about it like that and that becomes an h there instead and so this uh, carboxylic acid group is part of the active metabolite why do we not have the acid there to begin with again is to allow for the proper bonding for it to be able to go into the cell more readily so those are kind of things that esters are less polar than acids and so this is the reason why the actual drug contains the ester group rather than the carboxylic group, all right? Now, there are other reasons uh, that we have issues with certain uh, viruses such as HIV and the syndrome that it creates or causes AIDS, all right? Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, all right? And it's one, because it's a retrovirus. Retroviruses actually mutate more readily, more rapidly than um, DNA viruses, all right? The reason for that is that they only have one copy of the genetic material rather than having two strands. Therefore, it's more readily, it's more easy for it to have mutations, changes in those base pairs, all right? In this case, I guess not, not a pair in those bases, all right? Two, uh, HIV attacks the cells that are responsible for um, the immune system's response to viruses, which is, in fact, uh, something that makes it even more difficult for our own body to kind of actually help itself, all right? In addition to that, all right, um, there are many other issues that have, um, that come about. Um, HIV is a, has a very, very rapid rate of mutation. It can lie dormant, all right? Um, 
any drugs that have been developed like uh, AZT and um, um, I'm spacing right now on the name of the drug. Sorry. Uh, Siduvudine, C- 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 all right, um, actually also have very toxic effects on the host cells, and therefore there is an issue. But the biggest problem with treating HIV AIDS is, of course, the social, cultural, um, and socioeconomic issues about it. The drugs are very expensive, all right, so all of these uh, antiretroviral drugs are quite expensive. Two, because of the population that initially HIV and AIDS um, was involved with or presented itself in, um, it has had a lot of social um, stigma, all right, because of uh, issues of um, different cultures and different groups having problems with homosexuality, with uh, intravenous drug use. Uh, and so, and the idea that because uh, it can be transmitted as a sexually transmitted disease, that also is an issue with uh, many different cultures and religions. And so that is going to be a problem. Um, so development of these vaccines have not, uh, vaccines for HIV AIDS have not been uh, possible yet. Um, we're hoping for some uh, better um, options coming up. And um, luckily there has been some new combination of antiretroviral drugs that have become much more um, potent, they are working well, they have less side effects, so there is the possibility of it being a disease that can be managed, uh, but it's still something that is pretty difficult. All right, well, that is antivirals for you. Thank you.